Hello students, welcome to SAM classes. Now, there is something written on the screen and that is life is way beyond any exam. So what happens if we do good, if we do bad? Now see, when you're starting to write for this exam, just think that life is way and way more important, more bigger than just any exam which you will face in your life. This is just the beginning of your competitive career. This is one exam you are facing or you have faced two or three more exams and you will be facing a lot of them in your future. So the exams should not be able to strike a fear in your hearts because you know deep down there that you have a lot of more exams to face. Now fear is sometimes one of the driving factors but it should not be always. You should not write an exam because you are fearing from it. You should write an exam because you want to do it, you love to do it. Because in order to do something which you like, which you love, you have to write this exam. So if somebody really wants to do engineering, somebody really wants to follow its passion of engineering, then he or she who is writing won't fear the exam. Because for them, that is the exam is the medium for going towards their passion. So today, before going in much depth and all about, tomorrow you have an exam. Okay, so first two stories I want to share with you all. Understand and try to learn something from it. Try to take something from these two stories. These two stories are dedicated to two of my friends. Let's not disclose the names, but yeah, you will be finding it relatable in your life. So what happened? One student was preparing a lot. He prepared, he did everything. He solved three to four mock tests even before exam. And two days before exam, he made a plan that whatever happens, I'll revise everything of the whole book again at once. And while he was revising, he got a bit delayed. And one day before the exam, he had a pile up of lot of chapters to complete. Now he was not able to see what to do. He got, his body was slowly, slowly getting slower because he's been continuously studying for the past 15 to 20 days without much of rest. Every day's work was like 12 to 4, 12 to 4, 12 p.m., 12 a.m. to sleep at night and 4 a.m. to get up early in the morning. And then there was no break in these 15 days. He was so much into scoring so good like he was so much into to get a damn good score he forgot to relax his body that why he was studying he forgot to love the subject now he took a challenge that i need to finish everything and it was good he has done before but this time his body was a bit tired so what happened at 12 pm in the afternoon he suddenly thought i have to finish around more than half of maths and half of physics. So what I'll do, he made just like we used to do, we make a timetable in our brain. Okay, 12 p.m. in the afternoon to 12 night morning, I'll study this topic. And from then again, today I won't sleep because it's just for one day, 12 a.m. in the morning to 6 to 8 a.m., 6 a.m. If my center is far away, I'll study the maths part. So he made a plan like this. So he studied, he started studying, again he focused, he pushed his body and brain that whatever happens, okay, even I'm feeling weak, even I'm feeling tired, okay, I have to go through that. He started studying. He started studying by 1, 1.30 in the night, AM, he was able to finish. Now still, he's able to see he has a lot of maths to do. He hasn't started the second half of the maths and he, he needs to revise all of them. Now, though he has already revised, but since he has made up his mind that this is his drop year, so he has to revise once again so that he can't take any risk. So what he does, he again takes the help of the wonderful stuff that we have, that is the coffee, making up, okay, and drinks a large portion of the coffee and he sits. He consoles his mind and heart. That this is the last battle you need to fight, okay? And this is all worth it. And you need to work hard, okay? Though you have already done so many times, one last time you need to do. So he sat down on his study table. Now, while studying, he was 
able to feel that pressure okay mounting on his body and his tiring brain slowly slowly he is able to feel that though he is doing the problems and everything but his hands are getting slower and slower by each turn of solving the problems by each passing of the questions so he is able to feel but he hasn't given up because giving giving up is not his attitude and not his cup of tea so what he does is he keeps going on till six anyhow he finishes up gets ready goes to the center but by now his body is almost done and the body and the mind wants a rest he was not able to sleep for even 5 minutes but now he can see that sometimes in between he is not able to concentrate and is getting like the sleep in such a fierce form that it's dominating his body that body is asking that i need rest whatever happens so he sits down in the exam hall before sitting he saw his parents face he meets with them they are there for him he wishes his uh, greetings and he thinks in his mind and heart that whatever happens my parents has done so much for me so i have to work more hard one last time i have to give my best and then i have to come out of the exam center he sits in the exam center he sees the question paper almost all questions around he knows it but what happens while earlier when he was solving the paper his hands used to be very stiff his hands used to be very proper but today while writing and solving the question paper he is able to see a delay a drag while solving the questions he is about he is slowly slowly able to notice it slowly he is able to see he is not able to recall a lot of stuff also because his body and mind went through they wanted a restart they wanted a some time off and some, some time gap some rest so that they can again reactivate each and every cells of the body and they can work faster but he hasn't given them that time so what happened due to that he became a bit slow where he has to solve 180 questions out of 180 minutes his solving time dragged and he was able to solve 120 or 130 now while he was on the last 10 15 minutes he started to panic because the target which he had set up in his mind was 150 plus and what he is seeing is around 120 plus so there was a huge wide gap from what for what for he has studied than what he is right now able to see so he started getting agitated and he started working out more fast in that what happened is he skipped one answers in the omr sheet and he wrongly bubbled a wrong a different one and by because of that 10 of the next questions got in a wrong pattern and all of them went wrong he came out the bell rang he came out of the paper examination hall and then he sat and he started thinking what has happened how he became like this how suddenly everything where he had written five mock test and it became this in the final exam and this was the result in the final exam so he started to think about so my dear students understand you have done a lot what we learn from this story is you have done a lot but your body also needs a bit rest before the exam day so do not exaggerate your work do not exaggerate your revision today a lot okay you need to have a good sleep then go back to your exam hall and then give the exam so one thing very 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 important students today try not to now let me share you with you all one more story now one of this story is of my one another friend so he was also writing an exam and one day before he was involved with his friend circles doing group study and all suddenly a question popped up and they were discussing has then no has this question been there in the syllabus now he started thinking whether i have read the right syllabus or not because i haven't solved this question okay he started judging whether i'm doing right or wrong whether i have skipped a lot of stuff like that and that whole evening he planned to revise a little and he was delayed by that and that one thought that this few topics which i haven't done what if question comes from there what if question comes from there and and majority of the questions if it comes from there i won't be able to solve do i have done 80% what if most of the question comes from the rest 20% now he started thinking more and more on this instead of revising instead of 
revising the stuff, asking questions, calling his friends that, yeah, whether you have done this question or not. They said, few of them said yes, few of them said no. And he got a mixed feeling whether he has to do or not. Like that, had there been other questions also which he doesn't know. Now, it creates a whole environment of doubt in his brain. So by that time, he sleeps off, he gets up early in the morning to revise. That doubt is still tingling in his brain, just like an atom bomb. And that doubt is not good. So what happens? He goes to the examination center with that doubt tickling in his brain. Tick, tick. Now understand, when you have a doubt and you go for a fight, you go for a battle, it's very difficult to win that battle. Because you are not able to focus on whatever your opponent is. Here in this case, it's not a human being. It's a lifeless paper of questions. So he's instead of thinking about that, he's more worried. What if the question paper comes and the questions on the question paper, they come from the topic where I haven't studied. Though it is very less, what if it comes from their majority? But that doesn't happen. And when he entered the first question and his luck was bad, the first question that he saw was from the topic which he hasn't studied. And it was that first question and he sat with that first question thinking about instead of turning the pages, flipping the pages and checking other questions, he just sat about and started thinking. The first question that I'm seeing in this paper, I don't know. So what will be my condition? What will be my fate? Why I'm done with this exam. I have to reappear. Now the whole scenario to focus on that three hours and to get the best out of the paper went ahead from his head, went out of from his head. And the whole thinking is, if I drop another year and work hard on those 20%, I'll be able to score much better. And I'll be able to cover 100%. And he lost the track of time in that. And while doing questions, next he moved to the next questions. While doing the next question, that still thought, okay, that I have an option to write the next year, started tingling. And that didn't allow him to give the best on that paper. And later he wrote for somewhere around 100 to 105 marks. Later when he came, he started analyzing the paper. In the evening when he saw not more than five questions out of 180 were from the topics which he didn't study. So if he would have gone to the paper and attempted the paper with the approach that whatever I have done, that is more than enough to score in the exam and to do the best. And even if I don't know, I'll try to figure out because I know the basics of the chapter. And that is more than enough. Just imagine the first person figuring out a formula. He didn't know the formula. Okay. He figured it out himself. So when you are going there and you have the confidence that you will do something with the question, whatever it comes out. Okay, because you know the concepts, you know the, uh, what do you say, the concepts of the chapter, you'll be able to figure it out. You'll be able to solve it. And even if he wasn't able to solve, those five questions wouldn't have done much. Out of 175, you could have scored 170 plus. So students, understand. Today, try not to have a discussion much here and there with your friends and all. It's not good. If something they give you and you're not able to do, we'll go in a vicious circle of self-doubt that whether you have done properly or not whether a lot of other questions are like this which you haven't done and you what will be your case in the exam time your whole confidence is shattered today whatever you have done do revise it that much take rest tell your brain whatever i've done that is more than enough for me to do the best okay tomorrow when you go to the paper approach each and every question with that attitude but whatever I've done, I will be able to decode the answer. I'll be able to figure out the answer. Okay. And you will be doing wonders in that. So best of luck for the exam. We'll try not to put any new stuff, any new videos after this. Okay. So whatever you have done, just revise it, re-revise it, take rest, try to learn from these two stories. And again, best of luck. One more thing, students, we want to see it again before ending this session. That life is way beyond any exam. And this just this exam is just one of the stepping stones of your life. And you have to work a lot harder later on. A lot harder exams will give later on also. So don't worry. Just take it as one exam, one challenge, one struggle of your life. And you have to face a more millions of like that. So you won't be having the fear 
and you won't be working out you won't be you will be able to approach the paper in a calm manner in a confident manner and you will be able to shatter the paper now next thing is we'll be there with you all students after the exam for your counseling process for your career guidance and other stuff and we are planning to bring an entirely different series where you can focus on the passion on the work which you love to do rather than what you are being forced to do so we'll try to bring something on that so be with us work hard will be there to support you all you have my number you can give a call on that if you have any doubts regarding anything so best of luck work hard students jai hind